Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to share with you guys how I shot in this harsh sunlight condition right here. I'm also going to show you how I shoot golden hour in this video as well and how I managed to get these particular set of shots in doing so. If you're someone that struggles with natural light portrait photography, hopefully this video can help. Now I consider this shoot to be harsh lights that transition to golden hour near the end. As you can see in this video, we are on a farmland about two hours out outside of the city of Toronto. This was shot two summers ago, but the tips I share are still relevant today. And I hope after I share with you guys my process, you can apply this on uh, your future shoot. But before I begin, I just wanna share with you guys the gear that I use on this shoot right here. I was shooting with the Fujifilm XS10 and three lenses. I had the XF 35 millimeter F1.4 lens. I also used the XF 18 millimeter F1.4 brilliant lens by the way and uh, the 90 millimeter f2 which was great because of the location i had some room to operate with this lens i want to start at the beginning which i call my early set you can see that it's bright the location is vast it's very open and there are no shades to be found so i had to operate in a way that was going to make michaela our model look good around this time the sun wasn't at golden hour yet it was intense it was bright it was quite harsh i didn't think i I would have gotten anything good but what i think helped make these images look so good in harsh light is i used a black pro mist uh, diffusion filter with the xf 35 millimeter f14 the reason why i used the black pro mist is to take some of that harsh light out and soften that light with the mist filter with the diffusion filter sorry now combine this with the xf 35 millimeter f14 i got some nice dreamy images that i am quite proud of Ontario is quite boring to photograph in my opinion. Outside of the city of Toronto, everything is far and everything is flat and boring. <laughs> <laughs> because of how boring I thought the locations was going to be until sunset comes around, I told my friend who was shooting with me to go buy some flowers so we can use it as a prop. Maybe it will hide how boring the location really is. So, so my tip is to location scout. Don't go into the shoot blind. Do a little bit of research. Dig up a bit of uh, information to see what's around the area. But after buying the flowers, we happen to get a few great shots. And in my opinion, the props do add a layer of dimension in the images I got. If my friend didn't pick up those flowers like I asked, I think there were going to be a lot of redundancies with the photos. So I'm glad I was able to have the foresight to see that and adjust accordingly because of the boring location. Now let's talk about lighting and how I use Used it. The sun was fairly bright, not gonna lie, but uh, I thought because of how intense the sun was, I was going to get nothing out of this shoot, like zzz, nada, zilch. For this part of the set, I placed Michaela in a way that had the sun as the key light. So as you can see in some of these shots, the sun was just blasting this entire scene. So I just thought might as well try to get something interesting here. I asked Michaela if she can pose with her arms and her hands because her fit was giving a dreamy vibe. And if she can nail that pose, we were off to a good start. And I ended up with this shot right here. Now, something I would do different with this shot looking back on it is I would probably tell her to remove this hat that she was wearing. I think this pose would work better if the hair was out. It would have made the shot, in my opinion, dreamier and vibier. I love it when you see hair movement. Hair movement equals moody images. Remember that, guys. So for this shoot, I didn't shoot wide open because of how intense the light was. I actually stopped it down from anywhere from two, f2.8 to f5.6. The thing that I find with my XF 35 millimeter lens at the time was every time I shot at f1.4, my images didn't have that crispiness that I would like. So I decided to shoot some shots at f2.8 because I still wanted some of that separation from the background, but I also want the face to be sharp and full of details. The reason why detail is so important for me is because when you're retouching skin on an image uh, you do a lot of clone stamping and content awareing stuff right you would want the face not to have any sort of like softness issues or anything like that that's why you want the details that's why you want to stop down your shots so you can have details to clone from so i find that uh shooting at f 2.8 was a happy medium for both things that I wanted. And don't be afraid of shooting portraits stop down. There's a time and a place for bokeh, but try shooting portraits at f5.6 and higher if you want a bit more detail in your portraits. And 
And as you just saw with these sets, I went for a subdued filmic edit. The sky was bright and blue that day, so in post I had to desaturate the blues and the science just a bit. I didn't want the sky to be too punchy and distract you from the subject. Uh, the color scheme that I used for this was, again, a slight orange and teal look. Again, I'm working with complementary colors. You see that the sky is of a blue hue. The green hue from the grass is desaturated, and what's left after that is Michaela, and she has an orange and red hues um, all over her, right? I'm uh, making this a more pleasant image to look at when you tie the color scheme together. And I don't know if you guys can see, but uh, the tint was leaning towards the green side as I wanted to make this feel and look more filmic. And from what I've seen in past movies and film photography, there is sometimes a green tint in the shot. So that's where I had that idea to put that in to my edit for this set. And as you can see in the shot right here with Michaela and the flowers, this is why I said if I didn't have these flowers, the shot is going to look boring. The flowers do add another layer of element into the photo, making it look more interesting with this sort of background. I also remembered asking Michaela what she thinks her best feature is, and she responded, her doed eyes. And I agree, she does have doed eyes when she stares into the camera. And whenever you see an image from her, you're asking like, what's her deal or like, What's the story here? And I absolutely love it because of that stare that she has with her eyes. It looks very dreamy like. <laughs> So what I did was I captured her eyes in this very moment and you only get to this point if you ask questions. Some of the questions you should ask the model is what side is your best side? What side is your good side to photograph or something along those lines? What do you think your best feature I should highlight uh, when, I'm, when I'm taking your photo? Because they know themselves more than you know them. shot for around an hour and once that hour was up golden hour was around um, and the sunset colors were just coming around and for golden hour I wanted to switch it up instead of using the sun as a key light like I did earlier we are using the sun as backlight uh, in some of these shots right here <laughs> So you can see the difference in these two shots. One is shot with the sun in front and the other was shot with the sun in the back. Both give different vibes. So make sure you know what you're looking for when it comes to um, the look that you want using the sunlight. And for the backlight shots, I wanted to play with the sun. It was insanely bright and powerful still. You may look at this shot and think that entire background is blown out. And during golden hour, there is no way you can expose for the highlights and this is close to what I saw with my human eye. That day the sun was so bright and looking at the looking at looking at it from a distance, the sky was just super bright and orangey. So I understand the rule of always exposing for the highlights. But when mother nature looks like this in real life, there's no way to expose for the highlight and bring back the shadows without some noise and artifacts but in this case I exposed for Michaela I may have slightly underexposed by a stop and I ended up with this shot right here and since Michaela was posing in a way that created a natural triangle frame as she was like trying to grab her the side of her head I composed the shot in a way that made the sun just come out of that frame and just peek it a little to give you that flare again it just adds another layer into the shoot because you can't do much in this area. So you have to be creative with your composition. I did the same with similar shots afterwards. I just played around with it. And I also switched to a different bouquet of flowers for a variety. <laughs> and then afterwards, I positioned her in a way where, that the sun was hitting uh, the side of her face to get some of that side light, some of that rim light, some of that edge light. And I also played around with some more backlighting, as you can see here. And this is just me just following the mantra in my um, previous videos about following the light. So if you want to improve your portrait photography exponentially, go watch that video where I mention follow the light. I go into more detail about it.
And afterwards, I wanted to switch out lenses. I felt I had enough shots with the 35 millimeter. So I got the 18 millimeter F1.4 out. I shot with uh, that lens a few more times and I wanted to do a top down shot of Michaela laying down in the field with some of the flowers we had laid out around her. And pro tip for you guys here, if you wanna get this type of shot, bring a small step ladder. This was, this was so clutch as I, I got up a few steps higher to uh, get this type of shot. And finally, I switched to the 90mm f2 as the sun was just about to set to get some final shots. I think the shots of the 90mm were some of my favorite shots from the set. And we had Michaela go into my friend's car while I tried to compose some shots with her in it while the sun was still available. And afterwards, I asked her to get out of the car so we could get some more, more shots uh, right before the sunset. And you can see how open we are. It's just a big pile of land and dirt all around us. And I tried to make this work with um, the location that I had. There you have it folks i hope this helps you i hope you are able to take some golden nuggets from me sharing with you guys my process and uh, behind the scenes uh, from this shoot if you find this video helpful do me a favor guys and subscribe to my channel i create photography tips and videos like this and do gear review on this channel i also shoot fujifilm and i don't think there are many fujifilm portrait shooters out there aside from me on youtube right now so if you like portrait photography fujifilm and gear reviews i would greatly appreciate your support don't forget to subscribe and as always my name is tongue i'll see you in the next video i love you